Hey guys, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. If you're new here, my name is Lauren and I am the Furniture Flipping Teacher. And today I am going to show you how I take this buffet slash dresser and turn it into a little bit of a more modern style. I love the chunky hardware on it. It is just cool to me. Um, I'm excited to get this thing cleaned up and to get started. I actually got this piece on Facebook Marketplace for $60, so not a bad price for this big, heavy, yes, it's heavy. I'll be showing you kind of how to get down, not get down to the particle board, but instead just kind of do that scuff sand so that our paint will still stick. And then I'll also be showing you how we're gonna elevate this piece as well. You'll see what I mean here in a little bit. Let's get started removing the hardware. All right, I am going to be keeping the hardware so I do have a larger container than normal because these are pretty big and bulky. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those all off before I clean. I'm gonna go ahead and take these drawers out as well. Just go ahead and get started with the cleaning process. Oh, that's interesting. The drawer slides are on the sides of the actual drawers for this one. All right, hardware is off, so you know what that means. It's time to clean. All right, I've got my super clean that I'm gonna be cleaning with today. You just wanna make sure that you've got that degreaser. So this does have the degreaser in it. So that is great to use on furniture. Just go ahead and spray down your area. This is one of the most important parts. Again, I always talk about how prepping your piece is the most important part because you want that quality, good, lasting results. So I'm just gonna start with half. And then I've got a bucket of water here. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe down everything with the cleaner and then I'll come back and rinse. When you're cleaning, you can also kind of inspect. So as you can see right here, there's kind of a gouge in the side there. So I'll definitely need to come back to that and fix that with some wood filler. And I can just make sure that I'm kind of making a mental note of that on all the areas that need to be fixed. I do want to tell you that all of this dirt and brown that's coming off isn't all oils and grease and dirt. It is also the finish that's coming off. So only use the harsher chemicals if you are looking to sand it all down and things like that. If you're gonna keep the wood, don't use a harsh chemical. Use something more like Dawn dish soap because that won't take away that coloring of the wood. But if you are just looking to get a good scrub and even start to take the glossy finish off, then you can go with a more harsh chemicals such as that super clean like I'm using here. Okay, everything is all cleaned up and I would normally go ahead and do some sanding now, but since there were several, several spots that I need to repair, I'm gonna go ahead and make the repairs and then we'll do a sanding and we'll scuff sand as well as smooth out those places where I did the wood filler. All right, I'm using quick wood for these fills because there's some pretty deep gouges and the quick wood seems to be the best hardening substance, I guess. And so this is a two color, two part epoxy that you just rip off how much you think you'll need and then you mix them together until it's one solid color. 
and then you just apply it to where the gouges are. So here I've got some, I've got one right there. I've got some down on the bottom as well. The drawers actually are looking pretty good. There's no gouges on there. There is one more gouge on the corner on that side, so I'll also be filling that in. So we've got one consistent color there. So I'll just take some and start to kind of mold it in there. And this dries really quick in about 15 to 20 minutes. And then not only that, but then it'll be ready to sand and paint in about an hour. So that is perfect because, you know, time is of the essence these days. So that'll fix that one. There's a tiny one here right under it as well. My goal here is to actually rebuild that corner. As you can see, there's a pretty big chunk taken out of there. So we'll get it as good as we can, but basically just kind of form it. And then again, you can sand away the excess once it's dry, and that'll kind of help make that corner. All right, I think the rest of them are on the bottom, so we're gonna go ahead and tip it back so that I have a little bit of a better angle. All right, while I'm down here making repairs, I'm gonna go ahead and glue this back down. It's like it's just peeling and someone decided it was a good idea to tape it. That's not the way. The way, this is the way. Glue, wood glue. Anybody else, Mandalorian? Just a little bit for this. You don't need too much. If any, my thing's clogged. Kind of not the most ideal place because you can't really clamp it. Um, but I think with just lit leaving it here and letting it set for a little while and then coming back, I think that it will be dry. So we're gonna let the wood filler dry, we're gonna let the wood glue dry, and then we'll come back and we'll do some scuff sanding. It seems to me like the quick wood is dry now, so we're gonna go ahead and sand it down so that it's smooth against the surface of all of the spots that I put quick wood. So I'm gonna be using my surf prep sander and we're gonna just smooth all that out and then we'll do a scuff sand over the whole piece. the quick wood I think in a little bit more thicker spots isn't quite dry yet so I have got to wait a little bit longer to sand that more smooth I got most of it done here but again just that little spot right there is still wet and it's kind of chipping off as I sand it so we don't want that to happen and there's a couple other spots that I've got to get to once we set it back up all right, here we go. I think we are all dry here. So we're just gonna go nice and easy on this little area here. The 
Those little chunks that were missing were giving me trouble, but I figured it out. We are ready to go ahead and wipe everything back with a microfiber cloth. All right, so you're probably wondering why I didn't go ahead and sand the drawers and the door. And the reason is because these designs are actually plastic molds that are on top of the wood. So, you know, if, if I sanded that down, I wouldn't really do too much because it's actually plastic. So I'm not gonna be sanding that down. The paint that I'm using has a built-in primer, so that should also help it adhere to the surface as well. So basically what I'm saying is we're ready to paint and let me go grab the color so I can show you what I'm thinking. All right, here we go. We are gonna be using melange paints again. And Morgan actually, I think she must have just threw this in with all the other paint that I had gotten because it doesn't have like a technical name. So I'm not really sure if you can find this on the website. It's called Bluish Black. They do have one that's called Vagabond that they that is also like a bluish black, but this one looks maybe even a little bit more black than the Vagabond. I'm excited to try it out. So I'm hoping that this black has a little bit of those bluish undertones, whereas their jet black is just whoosh, black. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, I have my Cool Whip container again here. And the reason is because my favorite brush that I like to use with Melange paints doesn't fit in the container. Instead, it has to fit inside of a Cool Whip container. I am going to go ahead and just pour some in. And I'm gonna be using this brush for the flat surfaces and I'm gonna be using the Zebra Round brush for more of the detail areas because I think that it'll be a little bit more difficult to fit this flat brush in there. So that round brush is really good for details. All right. So Melange Paints comes in glass jars and I am so excited because they actually just launched a top coat. So a top coat that is satin and a top coat that is matte and I have got one of those planned for this flip too. So I'm excited to try that out and you can find all of these things over on their website. And of course, you guys know, you can use my code FLIP10 for 10% off of your entire purchase. It's time to paint. Here we go, I'm gonna start with the details. It's gonna be a little tricky because I don't want it to pool in there. So I'm gonna have to use less paint in those areas so that I don't get pools. Like I was saying earlier, this paint has a built-in primer. So therefore, we won't be needing to prime and this should stick right to it. And then of course, since this is not real wood, but instead it's plastic and kind of laminate, it is going to be free from bleed through. got this first coat of paint on and you just want to make sure like I just said you want to make sure there's no pooling so you know I kind of started on this front drawer moved to this drawer and then once I was done with this drawer the first drawer I was working on started kind of drying and what you can do is once you see it kind of drying you can tell the areas that have a little bit too much paint in it so before it dries all the way, I kind of just go right back over it. I'm not putting any more paint on my brush. I'm just kind of sponging it out, especially in those areas where I know there's going to be some pooling. 
This mostly happens when there is a lot of detail and a lot of corners and things like that, which these drawers are a prime example of. So just make sure that you get all of that evened out before it completely dries so that you don't have a mess on your hands. And luckily with Melange paints, it is self-leveling. So as long as you do this before it dries, it levels out very nicely. We're gonna let this dry and then we'll get on to coat number two. All right guys, we're back for coat number two. It's been a few days and in between that amount of time, I came to the realization after talking with Melange that I cannot read. And this color is actually one of their new releases and it is actually called Basilisk Black. Basilisk is apparently a serpent from one of the Harry Potter movies. So I am not a huge Harry Potter fan. I honestly haven't seen the movies. Do I have that on my bucket list to watch? Yes, eventually. Those are some of my best friend's favorite movies. So I do want to watch those. But in the meantime, I'm going to do a Harry Potter inspired furniture flip. This is one of their new colors that they are launching here in the month of July. And you guys get to use my code FLIP10 and you will get 10% off of your entire order from Melange, but you also get the first dibs on this amazing color. You guys know how much I love this deep, deep, deep bluish, greenish, blackish. So get yours over on Melange's website right after you're done with this video. I am gonna go ahead and sand it down just lightly and smooth out any imperfections in the paint and then we're gonna get to coat number two. So every time you do a coat of paint, it's a great idea to just smooth it out in between coats and then you're gonna take a microfiber cloth or a damp rag and just get all that dust off so that it doesn't contaminate your second or third coat. So I got that second coat done. All these details make it take just a tad bit longer than maybe just a flat dresser with some flat drawers, but we got it all finished up. So that's gonna be drying and we're gonna go take a look at the hardware. Well, I'm struggling on whether I should do black hardware or gold hardware. Ultimately, I decided to go with my favorite gold, Krylon metallic gold leaf. And if worse comes to worse, I can always change it to black. I think that the color black is just so, so, so close to that basilisk black that I don't wanna make it blend in too much. I do think that regular black is truly black and the basilisk has some more blue and greenish undertones so it would pop a little bit but the gold is just gonna pop way more so let's go ahead and spray i already cleaned these uh, you really need to make sure that you're cleaning your hardware before you're spray painting it or else it won't it won't adhere it's very similar to the furniture the prep work is going to make it last a lot longer especially because hardware pulls are such high traffic that you need to take those right steps.
Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry for a while here in the sun, and then I'm gonna come back and see. It looks like I've got all of the spots covered, but sometimes you might just need those touch-up coats. Okay, I'm leaning over the dresser. I'm gonna lay it on its back so that we can paint that bottom side, and then also I told you I was gonna elevate it. Okay, I'll let that first coat dry up and then we'll do a second coat on the bottom before we add some legs. Alrighty, we are ready to put some legs on. So these gold legs are just gonna go right here attached to the bottom. This is one of the first times that I am attaching legs to something other than a chair. So this is kind of a first step for me. Never done it before, but we're just gonna go with the flow and learn some things while we are at it. So this leg is actually perfect size for where the screws need to go in. So I just, these legs were actually sent to me by one of you guys from my Amazon wish list. So thank you. I know it's been a while since these were sent and it's, I'm so happy that I finally found the perfect piece to use them on. I'm just gonna line this up. I'm gonna do some pilot holes and what that does is it basically just kind of opens up the wood a little bit and then allows your screw to then go in a lot easier. So when you're doing it, you just wanna go nice and slow and this is particle board, so you wanna be even more careful that you're not going crazy with it. So I'm gonna start with these two end holes. And then I'll get my other drill. And then luckily this set that I have, it has these longer drill bits because it's going to help me get into that tight space where the leg is kind of covering where my drill might fit. So I've got my screws here and I'm gonna line this back up. Go ahead and put these screws in the holes like that. When you're doing the pilot holes too, you don't wanna to do too big of a hole. You wanna do it a little bit smaller than your screw so that when you do screw in the screw, you will still have something to kind of grab onto. And again, when you're doing this, it is essential that you go slow. I learned that from my dad. Okay, there's one. And that is honestly like, that's tight on there already. So that's great because the more screws that I'm gonna put in here, the tighter it's going to become. I am going to go ahead and do the other two holes in here just for good measure. So I'll drill a hole in there. So this is actually a lot easier than I kind of thought it would be, especially since it already has this perfect platform base for me that I can just screw things right into. That leg is not going anywhere. So we are good with that one. Let's move on to the next one. I'm excited, that's my first time ever doing legs. It looks good. 
Okay, we're ready for top coat now. The Melange Company made their own top coat. They've got matte and they've got satin. I am gonna be trying out the satin for the first time and I'm so excited because their paint is amazing so I can only imagine what their top coat is like. You know that I always suggest to put just a dash of the color if you are using a darker color into your top coat and that way it kind of minimizes those streaks and the cloudiness from the top coat. Now I've never used this top coat, like I said, so I don't know if it will have streaks or not, but I'm just gonna eliminate the possibility and I'm gonna add a tad bit of my basilisk before I put my top coat in there. You, when you are adding paint, obviously you don't wanna contaminate the whole jar, so that's why I am also using my Cool Whip container for the top coat. I'm gonna be using my Zebra fan brush. I'm gonna mix it all around in here. It is a little bit scary when you have the dark top coat. Trust me, it'll dry just fine. So you just want a consistent look to your top coat when you are adding some paint. You can do that by getting just a small stir stick and stirring it up. Here we go. We're gonna go ahead and let this top coat dry and then I've just got two more steps before this beauty is finished. We are finally ready to put some hardware on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and insert that and remember nice and slow when you're screwing the hardware back in. Hardware is on and we've got one last step. So inside here, there's just some, I don't know, I think there must have been something old and sticky in here previously. So I am just gonna go ahead and replace it with some of my favorite wallpaper. I know I just used this on the other flip on Monday, but you can't go wrong. Plus I really want that gold to pop anyway. So we're just gonna do some measuring and cutting and then go ahead and stick it in here on these shelves. So what I like to do with peel and stick wallpaper is kind of fold it back just about an inch or two and then I'll be able to stick it on and then I'll be able to peel it off and kind of flatten it out. To get it straight here in the front, I'm just gonna take my X-Acto knife and go ahead and cut off the excess, hopefully in a straight line. All right, and now for the bottom one. We 
got the wallpaper in. I fixed the door. It's going in and out nicely now. We're finished, guys. I really like this color. I kind of am wishing that I would have done the matte clear coat instead of the satin. It, this melange satin is quite satin. It is pretty shiny. To be completely honest and transparent, I haven't gotten around to it yet. Neiman and I have been moving into the house. We've been preparing for our upcoming trip and we have just been doing flips left and right in order to get content for you guys ready for when we're out of town. So moral of the story is sometimes life just comes at you and you don't have time for every single little thing. That is including me getting this dresser buffet listed. But I'm not gonna get down on myself. You know, there's plenty of time to get this thing listed. I love the way that it turned out. Like I told you before, the only real thing that I wish that I would have done was to use a matte top coat. And I might even go over it in a matte top coat a little bit later on uh, before listing it. But I love melange paint, you guys. It is just, some of the best paint that I have used. And I like that it is self-leveling most of all, but it's just, it has great coverage. It's self-leveling. It is amazing. And they're just doing so many awesome things over there at Milan. So if you have not yet tried their paint out, you need to get over to their website right now. And I have a code FLIP10 that you can use and you can get 10% off of your entire order. And since you are watching this video and since you are one of my followers and subscribers, you guys are some of the first people that are getting this color option available to you. So this Basilisk Harry Potter inspired color is up for grabs over on their website and you will just be blown away at all of the awesome colors that they've got. Be sure to go check them out. But also we've got one more piece of really, really exciting news. Neiman and I have really, really, truly enjoyed showing you guys the other side, the flip side of our lives outside of FFT. Things like moving, things like cleaning our shop, and you know, that stuff has to do with FFT, but some of it is a little bit more personal. And so a lot of you guys have suggested or recommended that we make a second channel. So we've done a lot of thinking and since we love sharing our lives with you guys and we love the community that FFT has brought us, we are going to be, well, we already did. We created another YouTube channel and it's called The Flip Side and we're gonna link it down below. Basically what it is, is we are gonna be doing vlog videos weekly that you guys can see what we're doing in our day-to-day -day lives outside of FFT. We've already created the page, so head over there and get subscribed right now. We are gonna be launching our very first video this coming weekend, so get subscribed, put those notifications on, because we've got a lot of fun things planned for you guys over there. That channel is gonna be housing most of our house updates and things like that as well. So if you're interested in all of that type of thing, head over there to the flip side and we will see you over there. I hope you really enjoyed this flip just as much as I did. This step of adding the legs was different for me, but I, again, am so happy with the results of the paint and the hardware and the legs and how everything just really came together for this beautiful Harry Potter inspired dresser slash buffet. I haven't quite decided what I'm gonna list it as because I feel like it could be both. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Get subscribed down below. We will be over on Instagram as well, at Furniture Flipping Teacher, and we'll show you when we sell this baby. Thanks for watching. See you on the flip side. Literally, see you on the flip side. Go get subscribed.